Yeah, yeah. Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. Don't say the car's topless. Don't say my car's topless. Say that this is out. We are looking at this year's Damian Pierce. Ain't no doubt a fucking about it in my mind. It is Kendra Miller out of TCU. I just don't know how high I can get on this kid, but there's no limit. We're gonna overdose. I'm gonna end up in AA. A A K M K M K M A A. I'm gonna need to go to Alcoholics Anonymous after I'm done with Kendra Miller. Whatever the fucking that correct acronym is, okay? Kendra Miller out of TCU is one of the funnest prospects that I've watched up to this point in my off-season search of the goats. I don't really know where to start, but I know where it's going to end. It's gonna end with him being really, 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 really high in my rankings. So Kendra Miller, one of the reasons, maybe the key reason that TCU went so deep into the college season this year was this kid all right he is 5'11 six foot probably gonna weigh in between 215 and 220 pounds so he's ready to touch the ball as many times as the team wants to give it to him okay on the day of the draft he will be under 21 years old so you're talking about someone who's 20 years old when he's gonna get drafted this kid is ah man how do i describe him he is so slippery so underrated Lee slippery it's like tacklers just slide right off of this man it makes it it's like they lubed up their hands before they tried to tackle he runs really strong has unbelievably good contact balance the telltale sign for me whether or not you're going to be a good running back at the next level is do you make the first guy miss do you make the first guy miss and he always does he has a few traits that i'm going to get into the comps for this player later on in the video because a few traits that I think stand out that make the comps make sense. He has uh, this this one thing happens. I feel like actually a few things happen to him when he's running the ball pretty often. One of them is like when he gets hit in the backfield, there'll be the defender comes in like hit his bottom leg or whatever, and he'll always have the wherewithal to put his hand down into the dirt and keep his balance going. So he gets his leg swept, but puts his hand down and continues to run after that. Like to take this guy down is really, really difficult. And he has this other thing that he does when he's in open space where there's a man coming and he's going head to head with the man. And he just makes a subtle shift to one side or the other. And he does the thing where it's like, he does like a swim move, right? Where it's like the defender's coming. He's like, all right, I'm going to juke to the left. So he gives you a quick hezzy to the right, jukes to the left. And he uses that arm to kind of like swipe the defender to give him momentum to the next. It's like he's it's like he's disrespecting the first defender where the first defender steps up. He sees him and he's like, all right, I'm already getting past you without a fucking question, without a doubt about it. I'm going to swim past you so I could start to set up the next move after. He does this thing where it's like, sees the defender, swipe so that he accelerates to the other side so that he He's ready to make his move on the next guy at the next level. Like the first defender is just a snack. It's an appetizer for him. When he's running in between the tackles, when he's in the trenches, he is incredible at picking the right hole, but he's also incredible at getting tiny and like getting skinny in between the trenches so that when the play is shot, he's able to make four or five, six yards out of nothing. And there's like 17 different examples of this. Now, Zach Evans, who's coming out of Ole Miss this year, was at TCU originally. And Kendra Miller was basically the reason that this kid decided to transfer because he wasn't getting enough play time, but it's because Kendra Miller kind of stepped into that role as the workhorse. Zach Evans coming out of high school was one of the top three, four recruits in this class. It was like B. John Robinson, Jameer Gibbs, Zach Evans right there. And Kendra Miller came in and made this kid, for better or worse, transfer. When we start to look a little deeper in to the numbers like 2021 he did not have a big workload 83 carries 623 yards seven touchdowns only caught 12 passes for 117 yards within that small sample size though his 7.5 yards per carry led the NCAA he had the single highest elusive rating per PFF in 2021 still small sample size fast forward to 2022 we want to back it up of course does he do it again so these numbers are per pff and they're among 170 qualified ncaa running backs 3.6 yards after contact per attempt 36 36 out of 170 backs good number percentage of his runs that went for 15 or more yards 9.4 percent 34th in the NCAA. Now, while his elusiveness rating was number one in 2021, it dropped down to 24th, but still top 24 among 170 qualified running backs in the NCAA making dudes miss. And when we double down on that, we go over to Sports Info Solutions, his 29.5% broken tackle plus missed tackle force rate per attempt ranked fourth in the NCAA among running backs that had at least 150 carries. It ranked Third in the NCAA among running backs that had 200 or more carries behind only 
Bijan Robinson, and Frank Gore Jr. Would have been epic to see Frank Gore Jr. and Frank Gore split a backfield together. You know, some Wildcat, some Wild Gore. I am unbelievably confident that Kendra Miller is going to be a problem running the ball at the NFL level. Now, I don't feel great about his passing down skill set. He had one catch in 2020. 12 catches in 2021, 16 catches in 2022. They did not utilize him a lot in the passing game. They did not utilize him on like downfield plays. They utilized him on dump offs and screens, and that was about it. His yards per route run number, 0.61. So 0.61 yards per route run, 114th in the NCAA. So that kind of breaks my heart. If this kid was good on passing downs, if this kid was good in the receiving game, I'm not saying he's not, like he can't be if he's given the chance at the next level, but more often than not, the most translatable or projectable numbers from a receiving standpoint, the efficiency, the volume, tell us whether or not they're good at pass catching, whether or not they're going to be used at the next level. Like there's no reason, again, this goes back to like, I talked about Kenny McIntosh on last week's Tuesday video where I said, I got a little bit of Kenny Gainwell vibes where we are going to be in love with his passing down work to the point that we start to overflow that talent into his rushing work and say like he's so good on the ground now because I lo like like you're starting to project upside from other parts of his game into parts of his game that he doesn't actually have the upside because you love that other part of the game so much saw that with Kenny Gainwell people saying he was going to be the next Austin Eckler he was never really that good on the ground when you actually looked at what he was doing it was always great in the passing game Kenny McIntosh has a little bit of that going on. I think we're going to see a little bit of that going on with Kendra Miller because he's so good on the ground. We're just going to say, oh, he'll catch passes at the next level. Like the Kenneth Walker corollary here. Beginning of Kenneth Walker, I did not write him down as a comp for him, but honestly, I don't think it's that far off. Uh, I wrote down David Montgomery, Ramondre Stevenson, and this is crazy, but I see shades of Dalvin Cook. Kendra Miller's 40 time. I think his combine is going to be uh, quite interesting. For me, it's not going to affect much unless it's moving him up. I, I don't think he has the top end speed. He made a lot of breakaway plays at TCU. I get a lot of the same feeling from like Tyler Algier having a lot of breakaway plays at BYU where it was like against lesser competition where that won't actually happen at the next level. There's some people saying Kendrick Miller is going to run the low four fours at like 215, 220 pounds. I don't see him running like a 441, 442. Maybe I'm wrong. I haven't been following this kid long enough to actually know what his long speed is. I think he'll probably run somewhere between, if he cracks the 44s, it's going to be high 44s, but probably like low 45s, somewhere into like 451 to 455 range. He has made some breakaway plays, but that was also like Dalvin Cook. Like his speed was never his calling card, but once he gets onto the field, his playing speed was so high. Like when Cook came into the league and he was finally fully healthy for the first like year or two years, he was breaking off 60, 70, 80 yard plays almost every week or almost bi-weekly at least, right? And I could see Kendrick Miller having that same setup where, I don't know, maybe not a crazy athlete, but once he gets on the field, like his athleticism rises up. He rises to the fucking challenge. And a lot of those moves I talked about in the beginning, like setting up the next defender for the next move, very Dalvin Cook-esque. Like if you watch Kendrick Miller and you see him in the open field one-on-one -on -one with the dude, telling you he's looking to the second dude he's looking for the second guy he's like how do I set up this first guy to set up the second guy as well and that shit reminded me of Dalvin Cook just the swim move that he uses over the first defender to launch himself into the second uh second level of guys but those other dudes like David Montgomery Ramondre Stevenson Dalvin Cook extremely slippery without being overly athletic like that's the feel I get from Kendra Miller and I think he's going to be a stud runner at the next level what that translates to in the NFL draft I don't know um, if he went in the second round. Probably be a little bit surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if a team fell in love with him and took him early uh, back into the second round. I don't think he'll go much later than late day two. I think he will end up as a third round pick. And I think he'll be one of the biggest risers throughout the rest of this draft process. As people continue to watch him, as the hype builds, as people like me make videos on him and then people get more aware of the player. Kendra Miller, for me, we'll, we'll wait for the combine, we'll wait for the draft capital, but I think he's right up. He's top five running back in this class for me. I might throw him as high as RB3, RB4, RB2 maybe, if things really, really break right here. I think there'll be other running backs that end up getting drafted too high for him to actually be the RB2 in this class. But in terms of like a talent skill set standpoint, Kendra Miller is one of the best backs in this class. Really, really fun to watch. Highly suggest you go check him out. He needed the exposure. 
we needed to take the top off. So if you feel exposed in the best way possible to Kendra Miller right now, and if you enjoyed the video down below, drop what player you want me to talk about in next week's video. Running back, wide receiver, could be a tight end or quarterback. I don't really love breaking down quarterback film, but I'll fucking do it for y'all. As long as you hit the thumbs up button, as long as you subscribe to the channel. If you are new, throw the D in the subscribe button, and we are out of here. I'll see y'all. You'll see Noah on Wednesday. You'll see me again on Friday for some Dynasty. Out. Thank you.